If you ever feel like your growing season is just too short, and I understand, I have some solutions for you today that I'm really excited to share with you. Getting a jump start on spring growing or extending your season into the fall or even into the winter can make growing so much easier. And a few weeks ago, we asked our audience to send in pictures of what they do and how they extend their growing season. You guys really delivered. So today I'm gonna share a bunch of those ideas with you. I'm also going to show you what I do and give you a tour of my greenhouse too, which I haven't done on this channel. I'm really excited. I hope this is inspiring for you. I am certainly inspired after seeing all of this. So let's get started. So this submission comes from Andrea in Edmonds, Washington. She gardens in zone 8B. Here she says she's growing broccoli, shelling peas, hollyhocks, delphiniums, black-eyed Susans, and two types of coneflower. So she's getting her seeds started in this, and she says she keeps them outside all winter long. Should we have temps in the teens for longer than a couple of days, I would probably move it next to some bushes for a little extra warmth or throw a blanket on top. This is a great example of milk jugs, using milk jugs to start seeds. Basically what you do is you cut the milk jug off about four or five inches from the bottom. You fill the bottom part with soil. You put your seeds in there and then you duct tape it closed and be sure you mark on your milk jug what you're sowing. And in some locations, you can leave the top off. Here in Colorado, we would put the top on but then take the tops off on warm days to allow for some ventilation. But you basically are creating a tiny little greenhouse for those seedlings to start, and that's what she's doing. She also has that plastic bin. If you notice those, there are cups inside. They're probably full of soil, and that is where she's starting some seeds also. So again, it's like a mini greenhouse, and she only needs to protect it a little bit when it gets really cold. You can look at that picture too and see that there's condensation on the inside of the milk jugs and also on the top. So that's helping to keep things from drying out. If you live in a place where seedlings, having seedlings dry out is a big problem, it is here in Colorado, this can be a really helpful solution too. Just keeping those seedlings in a container like that can help preserve the moisture a little bit. This is simple, it's cheap, and a great example of upcycling. So thanks, Andrea. Our next submission is from Robert N. in Miamisburg, Ohio, and he gardens in zone six. He says he's still growing carrots, lettuce, and beets in January. You see, he's got some raised beds. Those are great. And I love this DIY cover for them. It's just, I think, some two by fours that he has created a little frame and then covered with um, probably an agricultural plastic. And that, again, it's gonna trap in heat and it's going to trap in moisture too and protect those. And so he's in zone six, you see snow on the ground and he's still growing, which is fantastic. The other thing I like about these covers, Robert, which I think is great and something that lots of people can um, maybe emulate, is that they're heavy enough that they're not going to blow away. And for a lot of us who live in areas where there's high winds, especially in the winter, um, having something that's heavy that's not gonna blow away is a major bonus. So this is great, fantastic. Our next submission is from Alyssa R. in Colorado Springs. She gardens in zone 5B, not terribly far from me actually. She says, I like to use PVC pipes and plastic to cover my tender seedlings or starts from the inevitable late spring weather that we get in Colorado. It's easy to lift the sides on warm days and then roll back during the chilly nights. This is a really nice design. PVC is pretty cheap and relatively easy to bend like that. I love the use of clips and those clamp, black clamps to hold everything closed. I think that's really great. And again, protecting from those winds is really important. Um, if you live in a windy location, the wind can dry out seedlings within a couple of hours. Um, so it, protection is really important. And this looks really great. And look at that view. Oh my gosh. Lovely view of the mountains from her backyard too. 
How nice, thank you. The next photo comes from Heather G who gardens in Denver, Colorado. She's in 5B, 6A, which is the same zone I'm in actually. She says she uses her DIY PVC hail hoops as a frame for a makeshift low tunnel. We cover it with heavy duty clear plastic tarp and use utility clips to attach it to our raised bed. We use it to grow brassicas and greens into the winter, and this past year we were harvesting kale into late December. Look at that, all covered with snow. One of the things we don't think about is actually snow is an insulator, and if it can collect on top of your season extender without collapsing it, and that is a big if sometimes, um, then it can help keep whatever is inside there a little bit warmer, which is kind of nice, honestly. But this is a great setup and harvesting kale into late December is fantastic. For those of you who don't live in places where you get a lot of hail, what she's talking about here are hail hoops, which we have to use in Colorado fairly frequently. And this is true in a lot of the Mountain West. We will get spring and early summer hail storms, which can completely decimate your garden. So we use something called hail cloth um, and put it over top of the garden. And there are some places, some years where they'll get five or even six hailstorms in a spring. That's really unusual, but it does happen. So we have to be prepared, not just for late snow, um, but we also have to be prepared for those sudden hailstorms. And so hail cloth and a, and a hoop like this is a really, really good thing. There's nothing worse than getting your garden in and then having it shredded by a three minute hailstorm that will wipe everything out. So while we're on the subject of hoops and polytunnels, let's take a look at my garden and what I've been doing. I've put in a new solution out front in the potager garden that has worked amazingly all winter long. It just started snowing again, but I wanna show you my cold frames. Um, it has been really cold here. Last week, we were down below uh, zero, 10 below zero, which is 23 roughly below zero Celsius. Um, and it was cold for multiple days, like four days. It was really, really cold. And I still have spinach, turnips, and kale growing. Um, it's pretty amazing. So let me show you what I've done. This is super cheap and an easy DIY project. Okay, so you can see that it is snowing. And I did this basically to see how long can I grow in Colorado in the winter? Um, I know there are lots of gardeners who use all kinds of season extenders. Um, and so I wanted to see what I could do. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is that it's all snugged around these birdies beds with um, bungee cords. There are two bungee cords holding everything kind of tight. And that has held through wind, which is kind of amazing to me. And then the other uh, piece of architecture here um, is that everything is held together with just some binder clips that I literally had in my office and they have worked really, really well. So this is polyfilm. Um, this is actually plastic drop cloth that I already had, but if I were to do this again, and when I do it again, I will buy some higher grade polyfilm, but this honestly has held up just fine. So the basic structure here, and I'll open it up in a second, is that um, you have tent poles. There are two tent poles here, and they cross in the middle. So they go kitty corner to kitty corner, on either side and cross in the middle. Um, and that actually makes us a lot stronger than if I had um, two arches. This is actually an architectural truism that if you cross arches like this, it's going to be stronger than if you just have single arches. So they're held together, you can see, in the middle inside with um, zip ties. Those are zip ties and they just keep it nice and snug. And we have had strong winds with a couple of these storms and this just has not even budged at all. So now I'll open it up for you.
So here you can see my spinach and my kale. And here's the secret <laughs> ingredient here. Um, those tent poles slide through the soil, but I put some pieces of conduit here in the corner. They were just scraps we had from another project. And they're about 18 inches long and they hold the tent poles perfectly so they don't move. So there's a piece of conduit in each corner and then the tent poles slide into the conduit. And the other piece that I have done is these are incandescent Christmas lights. LED lights will not help you, but if you have some incandescent Christmas lights, they give off just enough heat to help keep things warm in here when it gets really, really cold. So I have, you can see, I've got spinach growing here. I've got kale over there. Everything is doing well. And I have turnips in, I have turnips over here in this one, which is held up by a, a bed frame. It's an old bed frame that I've upcycled. Um, that bed is too little for the tent poles. They snapped when I tried them, so I used something else. But it has worked beautifully, and it's put together exactly the same way. So that's my little makeshift polytunnel for you. I hope that is inspiring. Um, but I am shocked that here it is at the end of January, and I still have fresh vegetables growing in my garden. Pretty cool. Our next submission is from Amy S. in Marcellus, New York. She gardens in 5B. And she says, I use frost cloth over my tomatoes and peppers to extend the season, sometimes even into November. This is fantastic and makes a really good point because sometimes it's easier to use those season extenders when the soil is already warm at the end of the summer and into fall. And you just use them to get through those kind of cold snaps and keep things going as long as you can. So that's great. You've put all this work into your tomatoes and your peppers all summer long and then you can keep them going even a few weeks or a couple of months even just by protecting them from those nightly frosts. This next submission comes from Heather K in Kings Beach, California, who grows in zone 5A-ish, she says. And she has a great example of why your growing zone is not the only piece of information you need when you're thinking about growing. She is in zone 5A, but that doesn't take into an account a pretty extraordinary piece of information that she talks about in her submission. She says, I use a greenhouse tent. We get a lot of snow in our area. Typical greenhouses can't support the snow load. So I use a structure I can take down in the fall and put back up in the spring. Our frost free time in Tahoe is about 40 days on average, 40 days. With my tent, I grew all of my greens, started all of my plants from seed, and extended my season by months. So first of all, Heather Kay, you get bravo for growing with 40 frost-free days. That is pretty amazing. Just for comparison, I think my growing season is short here, and I can count on 150 frost-free days most years. So I have three, almost four times as many frost-free days, and I'm kind of fussy about it. I am also in zone five, six. So you see that there are other factors, not just that lowest temperature, which is what your growing zone is based on, that impact how you can grow. The other thing impacting Heather's ability to grow is her altitude. Tahoe, they're at about 6,200 feet. And for comparison, that's actually almost a thousand feet higher than we are here in the Denver area. So altitude impacts growing and your capacity for growing in a big way. So she has solved that problem in a large part by growing inside this season extender. And I, I mean, I'm seeing strawberries, I'm seeing lettuces and kale and peppers in there. And it looks like some herbs. I see tomatoes growing in the back there. And then she's got grow bags deployed. I mean, 
That is really impressive. And I also like how she has maximized her space in there. She's growing on the floor, she's growing on those shelves. That is great work. So bravo, Heather. <laughs> that is fantastic. And I hope your spring season starts pretty soon too. Lake Tahoe is a great place to live, holy cow. All right, so I also promised you that I would give you a tour of my greenhouse. So we built this greenhouse about two years ago. This is my third winter using it. Um, and the reason we built a greenhouse is because we do not have a garage. We don't really have sunny windows because of the way our house is oriented and the way it's built. And I just didn't have a good place for grow lights. So we built a greenhouse. Um, and it's really a greenhouse and also part storage shed for all of the gardening stuff. So let me give you a tour. I'll show you around. When you look at the greenhouse from the outside, you see that there is a butterfly roof. Um, and the butterfly roof drains into the center channel. And there's a gutter in the channel. And then that drains into my two rain barrels there, one there and one here. So those are full of water a good part of the year. And that's how I water all of my plants out here because I don't have water out here. So up here you can see I have agapanthus that are overwintering. Any plants that I want to keep over the winter that aren't going to be hardy and can be potted up come in here for the winter. So I've got some agapanthus. There is a lemon tree down here. There's a big geranium. And you'll see I've got a little frost damage. Well, that is because um, these things at the bottom, a few weeks ago, it was very, very cold for a sustained period of time. And it appears to have gotten into the upper 20s in here. Um, so that was still like 35 degrees warmer than it was outside, but I got a little frost damage on a couple of plants. I don't think any of them are dead. And in fact, this geranium has new leaves on it. Um, and I've had some mice problems in here too, but I think everything's going to bounce back. Um, but it's one of the challenges. I do have a small heater. I do have a small heater that I keep in here um, and that runs, but it can't, this isn't a hot house. It doesn't keep it, it doesn't keep it hot all winter long. It just keeps it from freezing most of the time. And so today, for example, I think it's about 28 degrees outside and it's in the mid to upper 50s in here. So usually it is between 25 and 40 degrees warmer in here, depending on how sunny it is outside. So you'll notice that I have these um, barrels of water and they actually surround the entire room. And those barrels are full of water, but it's not water that I'm gonna use to water plants or anything like that. They are acting like a battery and they're exposed, there's windows on the other side of this wall. So they're exposed to sunlight and they hold heat um, and hold that heat so that it radiates out into the room uh, at night when it gets colder. And so they actually help to keep it, um, by providing more thermal mass, they help to keep it warmer in here. And there are, you can kind of see underneath the shelves, other, um, I think we have a total of eight barrels of water that are helping to kind of create that thermal mass and make it warmer in here. So that is my greenhouse. My husband and I built this greenhouse from scratch two years ago. He's an architect and designed it. Um, and we talked a lot about the features that we needed um, to be able to keep things warm enough. I knew that this was not going to be a place that was like a hot house. Um, it wasn't going to keep things really warm and like 70 degrees all year round. But I wanted a place where I could start seeds earlier in the spring and overwinter a couple of plants. So that's what we did. And it was a really fun project. Um, 
and it was a lot of work. <laughs> I won't lie about that, but I'm so grateful to have it. And it has been truly a happy place for me. One of the things I love about having a greenhouse is that on a really cold day, I can come out here and get some sunlight even though it's cold. Um, and so that is helpful to me too in the winter. So thanks for taking a look. So a big thank you to each of you who submitted photos and shared your ideas. We learn so much from each other as gardeners. And I hope that you have some new ideas for getting seeds started in the spring or maybe keeping things growing all fall and into the winter too. As for me, I'm gonna be putting up more of those tent pole polytunnels in the next couple of weeks because I'm going to be starting my cutting garden sooner and I'm going to try to use those. So stick around. Oh, and we're also having a cutting garden grow along. So be sure to join in with that too. So I hope you will like and subscribe and I'll see you around. If you have questions, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll answer them. Happy gardening.